PowerSmart recently sent me two snow blowers, one gas and one battery. But which one is better and which one is best for your driveway? Let's find out. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear. I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. And before we get rolling, if you're feeling the vibe and you wanna be part of the tribe, subscribe. Full transparency here, I told PowerSmart that I would give honest reviews on these machines, so let's dive right in here. I'll have the assembly videos for both of these snowblowers linked down below in the description. Let's begin with the gas model. This is model number PSSAM24BS, and it is made in China. Here's the facts. PowerSmart designed this unit to tackle the heaviest of snow conditions. It comes with an upgraded engine powered by a 208 cc four cycle Briggs and Stratton engine. This snowblower can deliver strong clearing action. Equipped with a push button electric start or your standard pull cord. This machine started right up for me on the first pull. This PowerSmart also has the platinum operating system fully equipped with heated hand grips, an easy to operate one hand 180 degree shoot control, and its patented design is perfect for tackling the toughest winter weather. This is a self-propelled snowblower with six forward speeds, and to reverse. Along with its 13 inch all-terrain tires, this thing can climb through the deepest of snow. 24 inches wide and 20 inches tall for max snow clearing capability. This machine can send snow up to 40 feet. Its anti-clogging system has powerful augers to cut through tough snow and divert it away from the chute to prevent clogging. This machine also comes with a two year warranty. Now let's talk about the positives on this machine. Here's what I like. They've popped a brand name engine on this unit. So this is a good step up. Now some may say that these engines aren't any good, but other than a basic carb cleaning, I personally have not seen any major issues with these engines come through my garage. This engine didn't bog down a lot when hitting high banks of snow, and it really gives this machine a good amount of power. Plus, these engines are really easy to start. Choke it, prime it, pull it, and it just goes. Typically, when you buy a budget blower like this, you end up sacrificing a lot of features. The heated hand grips and the bright LED headlight up front are a big plus for this unit. Some comparable models from other brands don't even have these features. And getting these features added on can cost a pretty penny from other brands. To have them already on this machine at this price point, dare I say bargain, throwing distance is pretty good on this machine. I was impressed. They say that it throws 40 feet. I say that it does a little better than that. And even though this chute is a little small, you can still pinpoint it exactly where you want your snow thrown. Plus, if you mod this thing out with an impeller kit, these suckers can really chuck it. I'll have a video linked down below in the description on that. I'm a fan of these tires. You get plenty of grip with them. And let's say you're not as strong or maybe you're a little older. Well, this unit is very light. Because of its overall light weight, this unit is easy to navigate. That rhymed. It does an excellent job getting around tight and narrow walkways. Maintenance is pretty easy on these machines too. Belts are easy to get to. Oil changes are easy just like any other machine with a tube right out the back. Even accessing your drive system here underneath is generally pretty straightforward. And to keep this video on a straightforward path with the YouTube algorithm, would you mind taking a super quick second to hit that like button? Thank you, I appreciate it. Now on this gas blower, here's what grinds my gears. One thing that you have to recognize going forward is that when you buy a budget blower, you're gonna get a cheaper product. There's plastic components all over this thing. The chute, everything here on the control deck, even the belly pan is made of plastic. Parts like this generally don't last a long time and will need to be replaced. Components like these controls, are a concern for me. And what it has here is a set of plastic teeth gears. And over time, there is no doubt that they will wear out. And while we're on these shifters, this shifter actually moved its way forward while this blower was in motion. It did this several times for me and for a subscriber here on the channel. That's kind of concerning. To counteract this issue, what I did is I tightened this bolt right here down all the way. How long will that fix last? Time will tell. The metal on this machine is also very thin, which cuts down on the overall weight and probably some of the manufacturing costs. This unit actually arrived bent in the box where this side panel was bent inward. I had to fix that. This unit may be 24 inches wide, but at about 10 and a half inches deep, I don't think it's physically possible to go any narrower. Couple that with these 10 inch augers, which are probably some of the smallest ones on the market today. Breaking down snow to be shot out the chute just takes longer. It's simple science, which will do more damage. A hammer or a wrecking ball, which will break down more snow. 10 inch augers or 16 inch augers. Bigger augers can break down more snow. Smaller ones need to work at it more. And that means you are out in the cold snow blowing longer. With this model, on average, it me a third longer to clear my driveway compared to my other models here in the garage. Lastly, based on my own experience, talking with professionals out at local shops and subscribers here right on the channel, these machines are seeing five to 10 years of good use before problems start to settle in. Now let's take a look at who this machine is for. Like I said, this is a budget blower. And let's say you just bought a house and you're on a tight budget. This could be the machine that gets you through those first five to 10 years. If you have a small to medium driveway and you get snowstorms that drop less than a foot of snow on average, 
then this could be a good option for you. If you're an older person that wants a machine that's lightweight and easy to handle, then this could be your guy. And if you live in an area where heavy snowstorms are prevalent, then probably not. Or let's say you snowplow driveways with your truck in the wintertime, and you just need a lightweight unit to do walkways with. You could get this unit in and out of your truck easily with a set of ramps, and after a few years, just grab another one. Now let's shift our focus over to the PowerSmart 80 volt, six amp hour cordless battery powered snowblower. Again, here's the facts from the manufacturer. This is model number DB2805 and it is made in China. It's powerful six amp hour lithium ion battery delivers 80 volts of snow moving muscle. No gas means no maintenance. It's brushless technology delivers up to 40 minutes of running time. And as far as snow clearing capability, this machine can clear driveways up to 18 cars and eight to 12 inches of deep snow. With a max clearing width of 24 inches and a max height of 20 inches, this machine can launch snow 50 feet. There's some knobby 13 inch wheels for added traction and it comes with an LED headlight. It has variable speed control with forward and reverse directions. The electronic chute control buttons are located on the left handle for easy control. The heavy duty steel augers and the composite construction are designed to handle challenging conditions. And smart safety designs prevent accidental startups, quickly stopping the augers and impellers when you release the handle grips. Now let's go over the positives on this machine. Here's what I liked about it. First up, I was really impressed by how far this machine could actually throw the snow. It can most definitely throw snow 50 feet. Just point it and put it where you want it. The electronic chute controls are a nice touch with this machine. With the flick of a switch, you move your chute where you want it to go. No matter the conditions, these tires gripped great. This machine is definitely not loud. No ear protection required here. To me, it's about as loud as a shop vac. Lastly, if you're looking for a machine that's easy on the maintenance, this is it. No gas, no oil, but you will still have to lubricate areas on this machine. But overall, there's far less to maintain annually on this snowblower. Now for this battery blower, here's what grinds my gears. Oh, Oh boy, here we go. I put this battery blower through the same tough testing conditions as I did with the gas model, plowing through average areas of about 12 inches of snow and the higher spots at about almost 18 inches of snow. This was heavy lake effect snow and it's a challenge for just about any snowblower. On two separate tests, this snowblower was only able to clear about one third of my driveway, roughly two car parking spots. And after that, it really started bogging down a lot. And as it started to slow down, it started clogging itself up. After about 28 minutes of runtime, Time, she was done. After that, it was back on the charging dock. Obviously, your mileage may vary with snow consistency, snow depth, outdoor temperatures, and the age of your battery. But that's what I got with two separate trials with a brand new battery. Side note, spare batteries for this model will run you an additional $280. <laughs> Average charging times were right around an hour and 15 minutes on a completely drained battery. In my experience, that's a long time to wait to get back in the game. I guess you can start shoveling while you're waiting. Another thing that I noticed is that this machine will completely shut off really fast. In about five seconds, this machine is shutting itself down. So let's say you're out there and you go down your path, you get to the end and you make a turn. Well, as you turn the machine around, set it in the right position, and then go to grab the controls, the machine will most likely be off, which means you have to then turn it back on and then go. This can start to get a little annoying after a while. And as far as the levers go, on at least five different occasions, I let go of the lever, I walked away from the machine, and I came around to the front and the augers were still spinning. Look at this, this is about the third time this has happened. I'm not holding that lever. This guy's just spinning away. Not holding it again, still spinning. That's a safety hazard. Unless I just found a major unlock on this machine, that's a big safety concern. If you're outside snow blowing and you have little kids, I strongly recommend keeping them far away from this machine. The chute controls themselves took a little while to get used to. Unlike the gas model where you can actually adjust the chute and turn it while you're going down your path, this model requires you to set your chute first and then go. You cannot adjust it with the buttons while the machine is in motion. It won't let you do it. Only when you let go of the drive lever is when you're able to actually readjust the chute. That can get pretty annoying. Let's say there's a giant tree in your way and you want to throw the snow around it, that means you got to stop the machine, turn the chute, and then re-engage the drive and go again. Lastly, holding on to this machine reminds me of holding on to a Fisher Price toy. These handles here are made of plastic and they have a toy-like feel to them. There's no grip to them whatsoever and my gloves actually slipped right off many times as I was trying to pull the machine back. This machine could benefit from rubber grips or at least a serrated texture so that way your hands can grip better. All right, so let's talk about who this machine is actually for. If you're not mechanically inclined, 
whatsoever, this is probably the machine for you. If you have a small driveway, like one to two car tops, this could be the machine for you as well. And if you live in an area that receives low snow accumulation totals, again, this machine could be for you. And if you live in an area where heavy snowfalls are prevalent, this is not the machine for you. Now let's say you have a big patio or a couple of walkways that need clearing. This machine actually did a pretty good job with that. And in that case, it could probably help you out. If you're a little older or maybe not as strong, this could be a good option for you. To wrap this all up, which is better? That is going to come down to a lot of factors that you need to consider. How handy you are, how much snow you get, driveway size, and do you need a lightweight machine? If you get a lot more snow and you need more consistent power, then you're probably gonna be looking at the gas power bottle. If you have a small driveway and receive low annual snowfall totals, then maybe battery's the way to go. Let me know which one you'd pick down in the comments below. For more cool garage gear content, click or tap the screen right here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the garage.